welcome to the channel. In this video, we're going to be looking at Molson Coors Beverage Company, tap stock. So I actually added a position for Coors earlier Monday morning. Uh, I got in just, um, I pretty much built my position up before the price had got above 36 and then it closed the day at 37.55. So it was actually my one of my best performing stocks on the day. Got really lucky with when I kind of bought most of that position. It still looks pretty attractive, but it was like a 5% move uh, today. So it was looking even better. So Molson Coors is an alcoholic beverage manufacturer based out of Denver, Colorado. I thought this was a pretty interesting snapshot of their product portfolio, um, at least for beer. So you can see a couple brands that are pretty well known. Um, Miller High Life, Coors Light, Miller Light, some other brands, Foster's. You'll see that one of the things that kind of stands out, one of the negatives for them is that they have a uh, negative earnings outlook. Right now they look pretty attractive, mainly because of their valuation compared to where they've traded historically. And if they're able to show some positive earnings, that's going to make them really stand out. So one of the ways it looks like they might try and do that is by diversifying into some non-beer products. Um, that might be some faster growing segments of the alcoholic beverage market right now, such as the hard coffee, um, their crisp and cider, which is pretty good. And it looks like they've got a seltzer brand, but I'm not familiar with, with that one. And then one also really interesting upside to Coors is that they have some exposure to the cannabis industry. This is uh, from an article that came out in August, and it shows that they're um, you know, working on a joint venture, which is a whole line of beverages that are launching in Canada, all cannabis uh, products. And they have like a variety. So they have like a low potency with a little bit of CBD and they have a high potency 10 milligram drink. That's the one here on the far right. So I think this is a pretty interesting product offering. And if we were to see any more legislation news in the U.S., this could be a really big market. And it looks like Coors would already have this line of products ready to go. All right, so let's jump over to TradingView. If you don't know about TradingView, um, it's a great uh, charting platform. Um, check out my referral links below uh, to get a discount on your pro subscription. And also check out my other referral links for BlockFi as well as free stocks from Webull. So here you can see Coors uh, really accelerated in the uh, 2000s and then has been on a you know steady downtrend from its highs 110 in uh, September of 2016 all the way down to where it is today. Um, shooting this is uh, 37.55. So I've drawn a couple of lines on here and you can see um, that this has been kind of a uh, descending wedge you know, and I don't give too much credit to technical patterns, but they're just kind of one piece of the puzzle. And in this case, this is a pretty bullish indication. So looking at the daily chart, you can see that, you know, we've been kind of wedging in. These lows have been, you know, not coming down as much as the highs. And then we've busted out of that pattern. Combine that with the timing of a really good earnings call and you have some really bullish movement. Um, I've put just, you know, some rough buy areas and then we'll see from fast graphs that uh, some of the fair valuations based on the normal PEs that and uh, multiples that this stock has traded for in the past that, you know, around this 58, 57 range is kind of where uh, that fair valuation is, you know, out to the end of 2021 and uh, 2022. All right. So that is a nice segue into fast graphs. So we'll take a look at how Coors has performed, at least over the time frame that Fastgrass has available, which goes back to 2000. And they've had decent earnings growth, 5% uh, on average. They've traded on average around a 15 point, around a 16 PE ratio. And right now they're trading at 8.81. So uh, quite a bit below that. And they actually suspended their dividend, which... I don't mind. I think that if that's uh, the right thing for the company to do to stay healthy, then that's better than them to keep an unhealthy dividend. Um, I don't like some of these stocks that have a really inflated yield. Sometimes those make me a little bit nervous. Obviously, it's bad in the short term for those who are expecting that dividend. But if the company needs to do that in order to protect their cash flow during this you know, unprecedented time, then I think that's probably the prudent thing to do. But when they did have their dividend, um, it was typically, you know, 1.75% uh, 
up to 3%. So I think maybe recently it's been, the price has been reflective of losing that dividend. But if and when that comes back, that'll be, you know, more bullish news. And also then, you know, hopefully a nice dividend. So you can see here what I was talking about with the earnings growth, why they really need to find some earnings uh, growth. And if they did that, this would make this, you know, uh, probably an all-star stock uh, for me at least, uh, if they were able to, you know, get that into positive and they were able to get their dividend back, um, that would make me want to increase this from, you know, what I'm having is like a 4% position right now to maybe like 6%. So I didn't look into the specifics of the Q3 earnings that just came out, but it did move the stock. Um, they did beat, you know, pretty substantially uh, $1.62 versus the uh, $1.02 consensus estimates. So we'll take a look at the aggregate scoring for uh, Molson Coors uh, as of uh, Monday, Monday's close. So we have the dividend. Right now I have this at 0%. Uh, the operating earnings yield is a negative 1.24%. Remember, this is going out with that uh, five-year time frame. So two years uh, forecasted and then three years historical. Um, and that gives us the valuation yield of 56.52%. So that's the amount undervalued. Um, so this one ranked 14 out of 84 on some of the stocks that I've been going through, and it gives us an aggregate score of 55.28%. And you can see here the uh, fair value pricing that uh, FastGraphs is forecasting based on this P-E ratio here. So based on the 13.79, the value for 2021, the end of 2021, is 58.48. And then it's actually a decline because it's you know has zero dividend, and then it's also putting in the negative earnings, so it's actually at 57.93. So we're looking for about a 50% gain on this one. Um, that goes back to that you know little sell area that I put on the trading view chart, and that gives you kind of an idea for the setup for this one. So a little bit of technical, a little bit of fundamental. You know some key takeaways here is we've got that nice uh, bullish break of that wedge that's been you know forming for a long time so that's a really good uh, technical signal um, we've got momentum starting to come up in the upwards direction especially after these last couple of days um, we've got a pretty big gap in that valuation that we talked about on the five-year time frame we're looking at 13.79 so right now uh, we're sitting at an 8.81 uh, they've got the upside of the cannabis they're trying to diversify I'm just scanning some reports it looks like you know, their main brands, Miller and Coors, have been losing some market share over the years. That's probably been some of the reason for the decline. So they've got to turn that around. So if they get that worked out, uh, as well as the dividend, it can make this a really great long-term hold. But for now, just have a little position, and we'll see how that goes. But let me know what you think about Molson Coors in the comments section. Be sure to subscribe to the channel. It helps out a lot. Like the video, and be sure to check out some of my other videos on similar kind of stock quick analysis. Thanks for watching.